on that third guy. What happens with the, the depth at running back? We still got excellent depth. I mean, it's one of the it's one of the deepest positions on our team. Uh, Shipley is a special player. Kobe's a special player. The highly recruited guys. I mean, these are they're young, uh, but very talented. Uh, you know, certainly this is more opportunity for Mikey, and uh, you know we'll see how he takes advantage of it. He's a guy that's just got to he's just got to have a little bit more commitment into the details of what he's doing. Um, you know, and and but he's very very talented player. Wrencher's a guy we trust immensely. Uh, he's every time he gets an opportunity, he's productive, and uh, he's he's shown that. You know, so we really trust him. He understands what he's doing. And then obviously we got Phil Moffa. And so, you know, I think Phil will be a kind of a week to week, you know, type of deal on, on where we go with him. But he's an incredibly talented player. But, you know, we feel good about, you know, the guys we got. Is there anything you can share about Lindsay and just why it didn't work out this year, why why things went? He just, you know, his decision, he wanted to get a head start on the portal. So wish him well. Did that come as a surprise to you? that he decided to make that move? Uh, yeah, it was a surprise, but, you know, it, I mean, we're in the middle of the season, but uh, in 2021, I guess nothing should should be a surprise. It's kind of, you know, where we are. I, I doubt we're the only school in the country in 2021 that's had somebody go in the portal. Just to officially confirm, Davis and Shipley are both your starters this week? Yeah. This week. You mentioned uh, Lante Bentley after the game in terms of Skalski came back. And, you know, were you anticipating him being a starter this year if Skalski didn't come back? And, and how much has Bentley learned behind a guy like Skalski? Well, you know, he, he can he can play Mike or Will. So uh, he would have had the opportunity to compete to be the starter, uh, but he would have had to go, go earn it. Uh, but, you know, Levante, he's just such a great example to, to everybody on the team. You know, uh, in being ready, he's a red shirt sophomore. Uh, you know, so he comes in, he red shirts, got a lot to learn. Red shirt freshman, he's a special teams guy. You know, and you got veteran guys in front of him. And and I always say, what are you doing when nobody's paying attention? What are you doing when nobody's watching? Are you preparing for your opportunity, or are you just you know distracted? And Levante's one of those guys that every rep is his rep. That's kind of the mentality he's always had. Every rep is his rep. Whether he's in there or not, you know he's always listening. He's always paying attention. He is about his business. He's definitely one of the most respected guys on this team. He's that way in the weight room. He's that way with his academics. He's that way with his meetings. He's that way with his practice habits. I mean, he's just an incredibly committed young man. And you know, when you have that and you're talented, it's just a matter of time. And you know, what a great example of being ready. You know, they're saying, it says, if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. And he's one of those guys that stays ready. And, you know, he's, he's not a powder. He's not, you know, he's just about his business. And um, it was awesome to see him, you know, literally find out uh, in, in the locker room after pregame that, hey, you're up. And what a game. He's ACC linebacker of the week. So, you know, that, that, that just shows you the depth of his preparation when nobody's watching and what he's been doing the last couple of years to prepare for an opportunity. So really proud of him, and, and uh, so is his team. Because, you know, again, he's, he's just that way in everything he does. He's just about his business. With that crowded depth chart in the mic and the will, with so many sort of like third-year guys in your program, guys that have been around, that preparation, is there something else about Bentley that separated him from sort of the rest of those guys that are about his age? Yeah, just just he's been more consistent, you know. I mean, he's just out-competed. Not, not out-competed. He's just, he's just had a little bit more consistent performance in, in the practices and scrimmages and, and those type of things. I mean, all those guys are good players uh, for sure. McGuire got in there, did a few good things, and I don't think Kane got in there. But, man, I love Kane Patterson. I mean, he's a kid that, that can play. Uh, but it was just, you know, it's just – Kind of where Jake's been out, you know. Jake's a, a guy we trust a lot uh, as well, but you know, just next man up. How about K Park? Any? Uh, He's still out. He's still out. He's still rehabbing his knee. 
Do you have any update on Spectre? I guess is that a thing that you're still making? Brandon or Balin? Uh, Balin. 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 Uh, he he's he's doing a lot better, and so we're hopeful he'll be ready to go. Anything else from anybody in person? Yeah, but you, you guys have been so good in recent years in creating a chunk plays, explosive on offense. I was, I was a as much of that this year is that how defenses are playing you is that execution is that a little bit of everything or well it, it we played georgia you know i don't think gonna see many people have a bunch of explosives against georgia number one uh south carolina state played everybody deep and we just ran the ball and took a few plays and played a couple quarters and called it a day uh and uh we played a team last week that dropped eight and and said run the ball that's what we did and, and it was completely opposite of what they had shown um, and what we prepared for. So that's our three games. That's what we got. And I can assure you, we don't stink. We're going to be all right. We're going to be all right. Anything else from anybody in person before we go to Zoom? All right, any questions from Zoom? Please identify <coughs> your name and affiliation. I stopped turning that ball hey, over, though. I'll tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> So, hey, Coach, this is Blaine Higgins from the Wall Street Journal. Um, I wanted to ask you a little bit about just kind of how the season is shaping up. I know we're only three games deep, but it seems like there's a lot more parity maybe amongst the top ten teams this year. I was curious, you know, if you have any idea why that might be and why maybe the race for the playoff could be a little bit wider open this year and you know, why that's the case maybe for you specifically at Clemson. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I mean, I think there's, I think there's a lot of good teams. Uh, I don't know, a lot of seniors, a lot of six-year seniors. Um, I think just the experience that everybody had last year, everybody kind of getting used to playing in front of crowds again. I think, I don't know, there's probably a lot of things you could you could talk about. But uh, scheduling, different, different. you know, there's been some tough matchups with some teams um, along the way uh, across the country. But, you know, there's a lot of good players, transfer portal, uh, you name it. Do you think it has when you have a? I mean, Clemson obviously graduated a generational talent and Trevor Lawrence, and there's a few other schools across the country that had these just unbelievable players head off. Um, you know, how much of an impact do you think that has on turnover from year to year on a team? Oh, that's college football. I mean, that's just the way it is. I mean, to, you know, Taj Boyd was left here as winningest quarterback in school history, and. Sean Watson came in here and tied him, and Trevor Lawrence came in here and set a new record. And you know now we, I mean, you're always kind of starting over. I mean, you you can you can have a year, a couple years here or there where you where you have an experienced group, like where we are defensively this year. We're incredibly experienced. Uh, the last couple years have been very inexperienced, uh, and this year we're we're deep and experienced, and it shows. Uh, flip side offensively, we're very inexperience in some key spots um, and you know but that's just college football that's just the way it is and everybody deals with that that's why recruiting is so important and not just recruiting but evaluation and development and uh, you know I can tell you this I love our guys and and we got a good group that's that's just going to get better and better you know so love the guys that we got across the board but uh, you have some years that you're more experienced than others and you uh, that's the same for everybody everywhere in the country. Hello, hi, this is Billy Witz with the New York Times. It's a little bit of a different question, but kind of the same vein. Just looking at, you know, Ohio, Ohio State's had some hiccups, uh, you know, at the start of the, start of the season, and Notre Dame, and, and, you know, even to a lesser degree, maybe Oklahoma, it has not played necessarily characteristic of, of uh, you know, in some ways of, of what we've come to expect in the last few years. And I, I don't think, I mean, I think maybe it was a surprise to see Alabama get pushed around at the line of scrimmage a little bit on uh, on, on Saturday. And so, I, I don't know, I, do you see any, <laughs> you see it, why are you laughing and, and do you see any common threads in any of that? You know, I think other teams need to have a little credit and every now and then. I mean, maybe Oregon's pretty good. Uh, you know, I don't know if you've ever gone down and tried to play football in the swamp, but that's a that's a tough. Been there, uh, done that. That's a that's a really tough place to go play, especially early in the season. You you know, there's still teams are figuring out a lot who they are and who their opponents are. You still don't have a lot of tape on some of these teams. 
Um, and uh, I don't know who Florida played the first couple games. But, you know, Florida, they recruit well. They're well coached. That's an incredibly difficult place to play. And, uh, you know, you, it, you know, this expectation that everybody's just going to blow everybody out every week is, is disrespectful to the, to the other teams and the, and the coaches. Everybody's got good players. And, uh, you know, uh, I, maybe Oregon's pretty good, you know. Uh, or sometimes you don't have your best day or whatever, but it doesn't mean you stink. It doesn't mean you're going to have a terrible year or anything like that. Uh, every week is a season of its own. And if you know anything about college football uh, and you go back and you look at where things are in September, you know, it doesn't always, always end up the way you think it is in September. But a lot of people – uh, buy into that. Uh, Ross was Ross was making a point the other day. He, he in that you know I think uh, uh, he was talking about I guess people back in back in 2014 I think uh, I think I think Ohio State was like 13th in November and Clemson we were somewhere in the top 20 and I think it was early November and Ohio State won the national championship. And Clemson had a great November and had a great bowl game against Oklahoma, 40 to six. And you know, so it doesn't it doesn't always end up the way everybody thinks it's going to go in September. That's why you play the games, and it's fun. That's what makes college football fun, uh, and that's why I make to me that's 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 why you know every game is so critical uh, in college football the way the structure is. And, when you go to a 12-team playoff, which is coming eventually, uh, you know, to me that lessens that a little bit. Uh, but, you know, that's, that's just, to me, one of the things that makes college football unique. Uh, these are young people, uh, and you have, tur as we, the previous uh, person said there, I mean, we have turnover in college every year, and you're figuring it out. You don't get preseason games, you know. You don't, you don't get – it takes a little bit to adjust to the speed of the game and playing and all that stuff uh, and get into the rhythm, especially when you've got a bunch of new people at some of these places. So um, I can assure you, you know, all, all, they haven't all forgot how to coach. Uh, that's for sure. I think somewhere along the line you've got to give, you got to give the opponent uh, some credit, you know. So I just think that's college football. And, and just uh, another question going back, to, you know, you talked about guys maybe, uh, you know, especially offensively, I think, losing their technique when the, when, uh, uh, the game, uh, you know, the game was played and guys are practicing well. Do you think that, is there, is, is you and your coaches considered, I mean, is there any thought, that, you know, this week, okay, maybe, maybe we need to simplify some things or is it just the, the repetition will, you know, eventually pay off like you said well I, I definitely think the reps would pay off but as coaches you're always trying to get better you're always evaluating yourself every week you know what could we have done better it, is this you know could we have simplified this or that this past week very different very unique situation for the offense and uh, especially when you're when you're not dealing with a bunch of veterans um, you know and again I'm proud of uh, of our staff and our group for for um, you know, managing a, 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 a difficult situation, especially what we had to overcome. You know, ball security is fundamentals, uh, and that's that's reps. You know, you, you got to. There's nothing when you put the ball on the ground seven times in two games. It's not that has nothing to do with simplifying anything. Uh, this that's that's all fundamental, and that is you know just. You know, continuing to have an emphasis on the fundamentals, on you know six points of pressure, all, all those things. How you know wrist above your elbow, you know eagle claw, the whole thing on, on what you teach from a ball security standpoint, and you just you you just rep it, rep it, rep it, and you just continue to to practice that way. And that that, that worm will turn. Um, you know, we're very fortunate. <laughs> seven seven offensive balls on the ground in the last two games. We only lost two of them. That's a miracle. Uh, but that kills drives. It's bad field. It's just it's just a mess. Uh, so that has nothing to do with you know simplifying anything. Uh, that's just the basic of of ball handling and getting the snap, uh, et cetera. Anything else? 
when you are having issues with execution? Does that keep you from expanding? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, there's no question about that. I mean, you, you, you definitely don't want to add stuff if you, if you're not executing well, you know, but, um, you know, it's just basic stuff. It's basic stuff, just precision in what we do. And again, we were, we were, um, we, we, we had a chance to win the first game if we just, it wasn't, it wasn't, it, there was, there was, you can leave everything the same and change two plays and it's probably, it's an overtime game. For sure, or we win it. You know, we either win the game or it's overtime, and and who, see what happens. Um, and and that was just our best players. You know, uh, assignment wise, miss a signal, do the wrong thing, and uh, so on. On as basic a thing as there is, um, now, you know, some of the things up front, uh, for sure. When you got some young, inexperienced guys and, and the cohesiveness, then. Yeah, you've got to, you've got to make sure everybody's on the same page. Because if you got guys, if you're not targeting guys properly, um, then it's going to be hard to be successful. Yeah, well, on the, um, on plays like targeting, the targeting rule is it seems like that's really like I don't know, been happening more often in games this year in all college football. Is there something from a coach, especially with guys getting ejected, like in the NFL, they don't get thrown out of the game and stuff. There's something where you guys can maybe change the intent of that rule where a guy isn't losing playing time when he's not trying to hurt anybody. Football player. Yeah, I mean, there's always a lot of talk on the rules committee about all that stuff. Um, and, you know, obviously, I think I think they've done a better job on, on you know, from where it used to be. It was very rigid. Uh, seems like there's a little bit more common sense, but um, I still think it could be better, you know. But at the end of the day, it's about safety, and it's about you know for for the tackler and the and the 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 player being tackled, um, you know, keeping your head up, you know, and not leading with the crown of your helmet and so forth. But there's some bang bang plays that that you know you, you just know there's no intent there, and sometimes the defender lowers, you know, you're at a good angle, you're at, you're going, and, and next thing you know, a guy gets in your way, and it's it's too it's too quick for you to adjust. Uh, so. You know the intent is good uh, as far as you know uh, keeping your head up, not leading with the crown, not launching. You know all those things, but um, you know there there's still some bang bang p plays out there that you hate to see guys getting thrown out for because you know that that there was no intent. You know it's kind of like you know it when you see it, you know it when you don't type of deal. And you know, maybe we'll get there eventually, uh, but. Again, at the end of the day, uh, you, you want to make it as safe as possible. Given the call that was made for Trent targeting, when you saw the hit on Shipley on the last play, did it? You sort of say, what, what the heck? Yeah, I mean, and again, I mean, it's just you know, and refs aren't perfect, uh, and that's for sure. They're they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna miss some things just like we screw stuff up. But um, but then sometimes that's where you hope kind of replay, you know, is consistent and so forth. But um, you know, it's 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 just a part of the game now that we all have to deal with. You know, some are going to go your way, some are not. They're going to see some, miss some. It's like holding. I mean, we we turn some stuff in every week. We're like, I mean, how do we miss that? You know, and vice versa. People will turn stuff in on us that they miss. So it just kind of just that's just the human element that it's a part of the game. All right, thank you, Coach.